And now imagine you're not looking at one of these billiard games, but you're looking at all the possible billiard games that are starting out. And the point of origin of those would be the Big Bang. If we found that explanation, how do we know it's correct? Because collectively, as a human race, we've used our brains to come up with that explanation, but we are using our logic, which is not the only logic that exists. The way that science has been able to make progress on things has been by looking for explanations that do non-trivial work in, you know, explaining aspects of our experience, right? So, I mean, you know, we, we, could, we could equally well ask the question, you know, how do we know that general relativity is correct, right? Of course, we don't know. But uh, we have extremely good evidence that it's a very reliable model of at least part of reality. In this it reality. Makes, yes, this reality, mm -hmm. because it makes predictions that we can check. Right now, the main difficulty, the special difficulty with the why does the universe exist question is that it is not clear what, a, a, what, what we even need in asking for a non-trivial explanation for that, one that is actually doing work in the same way that general relativity, let's say, is doing work. You know, I think it is possible for us to get reliable knowledge about things in general. Just the, you know, the, the uh, uh, existence of the universe, as I said, has this sort of special character where any, any causal explanation seems to defeat itself. Okay, that, that's really a special property of that question. Uh, and, you know, that doesn't preclude us from knowing, like, you know, you know, amazingly, we do know a lot, uh, something about the Big Bang. We do know something about the temporal origin of, you know, our space-time continuum, right? But you have to make a distinction between knowing about the temporal beginning and knowing about the causal beginning, right? Even if we knew that the Big Bang really was the beginning of time, which, you know, we don't know for sure. It might have been part of some larger multiverse or whatever. But even if we knew that, there would still be the causal question of where did time come from at all, uh, which, 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 which still wouldn't have been touched. What's your response to that? Yosha. Um, the Big Bang is a fascinating point. It's, uh, an, it's an idea uh, about a point in time from the perspective of an observer in which no observer can have a memory of anything that came before. It doesn't mean that there's only one uh, future direction from the Big Bang, but every direction that goes away from the Big Bang goes forward in time. Right? So in every direction, you might have different observers. The universe might be branching out in different ways, but it, there's no point before the Big Bang because all of these directions are after the Big Bang. It's in some sense, imagine you're playing billiards and you put them all these uh, balls into a position where none of them are touching each other in the beginning, so don't, none of them have memories about the others. And when you're starting to push them in a bounce against each other, some of these balls have memories about what the other balls did to them. And so uh, the information is distributed now between these locations. And now imagine you're not looking at one of these billiard games, but you're looking at all the possible billiard games that are starting out. And the point of origin of those would be the Big Bang in a way. And it's a logical point that we are constructing from observing ourselves being part of one of these plays in this billiard. We, uh, from this, we try to make a model that compresses reality. We try to understand the most elegant way of explaining the arrangement of, these, uh, of what happens in our universe by inferring there must be this point where all of these inf information between these balls were decorrelated. Further, further on from what um, Yosha said, uh, does the Big Bang theory explain that? this idea of from the Big Bang we go forwards or? Yes, I mean, as I said, the, the way to think about, at least the way I think about the Big Bang the, uh, the, uh, for the origin of the universe is a set of initial conditions, physical initial conditions that were needed in order to predict the future evolution in time of regions of space, okay? So then we have our solution. No, we, but we still don't have the answer to where those initial conditions came from. Also, you have to think about what is time actually, right? From our observation, time is the, uh, a change that you observe in your environment or the rate of change in your environment from the perspective of an observer that is able to form memories. 
right? So there, that's why it's relativistic, because you basically have an eternal clock according to the speed in which you form memories, and then you see how fast does right, it and there's, and and there's a And there's a distinction between the past and the present. I mean, as in there is marching of time that is perceived, right? There's yes, a progress. You, you yeah. seem to have memories of the past. past. Yeah. which is a construction that you're making, right? So an attempt to cons uh, compress our observables by saying these seem to be memories of the past. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, and I agree that the way the physical explanation for the origin of the universe is structured, it's consistent with what he's saying, that you don't, you know, it's the definition of t equals zero, that we have defined it to be the origin of time. Um, and that's because we do not have access to the past of that moment. No. I, I think that clearly distinguishing these questions, well, what was the first moment of time and why is there anything is, is really crucial here. Like I, you know, I've heard people say, well, if there hadn't been a Big Bang, if the universe went infinitely into the past, then there wouldn't have been a mystery about, you know, you know be, because there wouldn't have been a first moment of time. Like, you know, that's, that, that's nonsense. Of course, there still would have been a mystery, right? The mystery would have been the causal one. Why does any of it exist at all? Also, that doesn't have to be a Big Bang, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, mm -hmm. conceivable that yeah. you uh, co construct a model of the universe in which uh, there is none of these points where the particles are fully addressed, or the, the billiard balls are fully addressed, but they're just passing through each other, and the universe is indeed, uh, from a temporal perspective, infinite. So to summarize then, I think we're in agreement <laughs> that the Big Bang is one explanation, but it's, there's still so much work to do in understanding uh, the, the initial conditions of, of the Big Bang theory. But at the same time, we are absolutely going nowhere near the, the, the question of why we are asking this question. I think, yeah, no, I think it would be fair to say that we don't think there is an ultimate answer. And I think that we may all agree, right? Yeah, we, we agree you that all, there is no... We, I, Scott and I definitely... <laughs> okay, you don't agree. Okay. No, I okay. think that there might be an uh, answer. I don't know whether there is an answer, but I don't have proof that there is no answer and there can be no answer. And I think that proof is too hard to make. And I think it's entirely conceivable that we get an answer uh, where we basically find that the only type of model that would uh, make sense is this particular one, we roll out all the alternatives. And so in this sense, we, we might get an answer at some point. And By I think elimination. That's possible. So By we'll get an answer to the beginning of existence, mm -hmm. but we'll never have an answer of why the beginning of existence was the way it was. I, I think a causal answer of the ordinary type is ruled out for that question, and so that it leaves only very unconventional kinds of metaphysical answers, and we can go through the candidates one by one that have been put forward. I'm not happy with any, any of, of them. them. But, you know, I, can't, I can't prove that no one in the future will find Come up some with a new, better, yeah, yeah will find some new way of looking at the question yeah. that says, uh, this, is, this is what we meant to have asked, and here's the answer. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.